Hello, everybody. I have to tell you already, just right off the bat, that, that there's more than two people sitting in this room. I'm just, thank you. <laughs> I feel like the docs get a lot of um, negative commentary, but they don't get a lot of positive attention. So I'm really happy to see all of you here today. Um, I'm fairly new to Armory, I'm fairly new to Spinnaker, and I am brand new to open source Spinnaker and working as the lead, co-lead on this, this um, SIG, so bear with me. I'm not shaking, I'm okay, I'm shaking a little. Um, <laughs> uh, my name's Tiffany Sunny, and I was hoping that we could start just by getting to know um, and some of you I know because I work with you, but hopefully just going around and introducing yourselves and letting me know who you are and what company you represent and if you want to, maybe why you're here today. I'll start with Fernando because he's right there. <laughs> to meet you. <laughs> I'm Rachel Braun, I'm on the event team here, so I'm representing the virtual audience. Thank you. I have friends that will be featured locally. Super, um, I'll pay attention to you. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Down to you. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, I'm not sure you're in the right meeting, <laughs> but we'll see what we can do. <laughs> oh, super. <laughs> um, actually, you are in the right meeting. Um, Great, so thank you again, and thank you for taking a minute to let me know who you guys are, since I'm so new to the overall environment. Um, so I thought that the, the way that I would like to spend this time is um, talking to you guys about what you think is great about Spinnaker and what you think could make the docs better. But I didn't come just with that in my mind. I, I came with a mission statement, because this is my mission. This is why I joined Armory. And this is why I'm so enthusiastic about being part of the open source support around Spinnaker. Um, I really want to, to create cutting edge documentation to support Spinnaker. Um, I agree with um, the, the member over there that said, um, good docs generate usage. And I, I don't think that in all of my time, and I've been working in technical documentation for a good 30 years now. Um, and all of my time working in, as, in technical documentation, I don't think I've ever worked on a, a product that, to which the docs were so essential, such a deal breaker. Even for my own adoption, I struggled because there's some work to do on this doc set for sure. Um, I don't wanna bash it because it's pretty darn good too, um, given that it's open source documentation. but. Um, there has to be a better way to go from I don't know anything but I'm interested to I know what, what to do with this this product now. I know how to use it. I know how to m make it useful. Um, so I really think that um, re-architecting the dock set is probably a big goal for this project and something that I would like to see accomplished by this time next year. Um, 
and my problem statement on that is that um, I hear a lot of feedback. Oh, the docs aren't helping. But there's a lot of content there. So why aren't the docs helping? And I think the reason that there's a lot of content but it's not helping is just that it, it's, it's organized in a less than ideal way. Um, and I want to use this time to just figure out how do we reorganize it, how do we enhance it, and how do we continue to curate a doc set that, that is um, – that is the pride and joy of the product and not the, the um, redheaded bastard child of the product, which maybe it feels like to me a little bit right now. Um, the, so I spent some time over the last few days thinking, well, what are some solutions that I could come to this group with so that I didn't make it all about what you guys think, but also maybe have some, some ways to generate thoughts and ideas. And the very first thing that, that occurred to me is where's the search? Why can't I keyword search on this, on this doc set? And I think that's an easy thing to fix. And if everybody in this room agrees, that, that would be better. Or if maybe there's a reason why we don't currently have keyword search in the doc set, somebody could tell me why. But that just feels like low-hanging fruit. We should just fix that right away, like next week if we could. Nobody knows why. OK, show of hands. How many, how many people think it would be good to have some keyword search on the docs? All right. Uh, we think we have a quorum. Um, anything from the uh, online community? Okay, am I talking slow enough? Okay, good people tell me I talk too fast, but probably not your kind of people. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the next thing I thought about that I would really like to see on each topic is a link to the GitHub issues. Like, we're not really giving the end user a way to say right away, hey, even, hey, I liked it would be nice, but that really never happens in documentation. You only hear if something's wrong. But, but if we hear this general, oh, the docs are, you know, aren't helping people, but we don't really have a good sense of where they're struggling, that's probably coming from the fact that when they're struggling, there isn't an easy, quick way for them to tell us why they're struggling. Um, so I think that we, sh we should probably find a way to include a link to the Git so they could just click and, and maybe even... Uh, a, a vote, like a like not like button, so they can say, hey, I liked it or I didn't like it. And then maybe if they didn't like it, then it leads to that another a path to that GitHub issues page where they can file an issue. And and I'll take a, a raise of hands if everybody agrees with me on that. How many people think that's like a high priority that would really help? Okay, so I don't think we have a majority on that, so we'll keep that on the on the low burner. <laughs> So I also thought that I would like to improve the docs by um, improving the landing page. Uh, and this is, I think, something that we're also um, thinking about in the Armory um, docs, too. How do, we, how do we improve the landing page so that when people hit, hit the, the URL and they land somewhere, they can quickly go, oh, that's what I want. Um, and these are some of the ideas, the, these, um, these, these pipe separated ideas were the ideas I had. And I'd love it if there was anybody in this room who wanted to um, add to this list. Is there anything you would like to see on the landing page that I didn't already sort of um, think about in my outline? Yeah. Okay, so we have a question from Ashley Kleinhans. How about adding, was this useful to each page of the top of the docs? I've seen other docs do that. Yep, that's what I was talking about in the last one, so that's another vote for that. Um, I would like to do that, and I'm glad that somebody else agrees. Um, awesome. Yep. Yeah, exactly. That's what, it, yeah, exactly. I feel like, yeah, I feel like, yeah, maybe there is a, a forum on this after all. So, um, so I'm really big on documentation, like I, I've, I've said, um, and even though I am really big on it, I feel like a lot of tools that I use, I don't spend any time in the documentation because they're usually lacking or they're hard to navigate, like you were suggesting. And I find myself like nine times out of 10, just like looking through the code. Um, and the only time that I think I've never had done this was actually through Stripe, like Stripe's how they document stuff. They do a fantastic job. Um, so, and I, I think, you know, like one of the things that you put up there is like links to references and tutorial content. One of the big things that they do is, um, well, this is mostly for like APIs and whatnot, so this might not be complete, 100% the same 
use case, but um, when they're talking about strictly APIs and whatnot, they have a button that clicks the language and it shows you like how to go about using that. So that was like huge. And that was the first time where I was like, these, this is the first time I've never had to leave the docs page and go to code. And, and that was like huge for me. Um, so that's something that I think would be really nice. And then there's like kind of like three caveats to like docs. Like you have the how to use Spinnaker, right? Which is just like, you know, like an everyday person first coming in wanting to use Spinnaker. But then you have people like us that are building things into Spinnaker. So those docs are maybe need to be a little bit more technical, which could benefit from more of the Stripe like interface. Um, but even, you know, even then when I see that, like links to references and whatnot, I think, I think that could be really useful. Um, so that's like something I would like to see. Like, I don't know if you've ever been to Stripe and seen how they do docs. It's uh, literally the best thing I've ever seen in terms of docs. I'm going to look right Okay. All right. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for the suggestions. Um, so this is, um, this is my proposed sort of re-architecture of the existing doc set, high-level TOC. I think the biggest problem, even though I still, I still think it's a fundamentally really well organized doc set. I think that the, the, the biggest problem for adoption is that it's not easy to figure out what you're trying to get. And we can all, obviously we can fix that with some good search. But um, I, I thought maybe moving some of the more important um, topics to a higher level would foster some, some, some better feedback on the docs and some better adoption and, and some happier users maybe at the end of the day. This isn't a complete list. I have not read and, 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 and thoroughly um, analyzed every single topic in the existing doc set. That, that would take longer than I've even been a part of Armory. But um, from what I've done and what I, I know and, and the, the, the education that I have thus far about Spinnaker, these are the things that I started thinking about. So um, yes. I have another one from the virtuals um, from Shane Emery. One thing we found is that there are a lot of hidden features and code options not documented. We either found the solution by Googling or trial and error. Some info came from Armory, Optimax, blogs, etc. Not too much from the Spinnaker OSS website or GitHub. Thanks for the input. Sorry, I knocked something down. Um, so we don't really have a well curated introduction page. And, and my proposal on that was like one topic that's sort of a conceptual that briefly says, this is, this is what it is, this is why it is, why you would use it, what's great about it, and then some of the, the key features. Um, and that would probably take like maybe some revision every, every feature release. There's probably new features that the community was wanting and, and it would probably um, need to be updated frequently, but at least then there's a high level place to go when, when you're kind of not sure what you want Maybe you heard about a new feature, or maybe somebody, your coworker just said, hey, check out this Spinnaker stuff. Um, that's the kind of feel that I want for like the introduction page. And then obviously maybe some, some related linking, and, and like you said, some maybe a, a delineation between, oh, I just want to figure out what Spinnaker is, and oh, I need to know how to do this thing. <laughs> um, and I like your idea about the reference docs, and I think that, that we've already even discussed it internally, that it'd be good to have them divided by code so that you can quickly say, oh, this is how I do this with Go, this is how I do this with Java, um, this is how I do it with, with um, JavaScript or whatever the, the use case is for that particular API. Um, and then links to reference and tutorial content on the online introduction page I think is always helpful. Um, and then the next high level marker I think for the TOC would be usage, right? That's the next place you're gonna go, okay? I, I, I kind of know what it is, how do I use it? Um, the biggest, the biggest um, blocker to my adoption was installation. I, it just, it took so many cycles that I was embarrassed that I wasn't producing any work for my company. <laughs> I've been here a month and you know, and I usually I started at a, at a highly technical um, company as a technical writer and within a few weeks I'm, I'm, I'm useful to the company. And with Armory it took a bit longer. I couldn't jump that hurdle and I think that um, a lot of things are happening in support of, of better installation in the community, and that's exciting, but I thought we really need to have better installation docs. And, and that even some information I just gleaned from attending the meetings this morning, and that it really is important to talk about Kubernetes, which is one big use case, probably, probably 75, 80% of the use cases, but then also the Debian package path. 
to um, to spinnaker, and I, I would love some feedback on that because I am still barely able to install spinnaker. So <laughs> anybody who has more information can give me some more insight in, on what would be helpful from an installation perspective. That would be awesome to hear from. Yeah, great. I would just say like the biggest. Oh, sorry. Um, I think as a whole, it has to be broken down because like installing it as, as we're finding is not easy. Like there's a lot of paths to install. I would, I would, I was wondering if maybe there's a path where we have like, all right, at least you have it started and you have a UI, you can create a pipeline or at least get in there and create an application. Right. And then from there, there's like the operational stuff like, okay, you got past this. You're not seeing cloud driver errors on boot, right? It's working. Now let's go ahead and move into like a user guide or like a user story because like it, it's a lot to say, hey, this is how you spin it up and how you create a pipeline and how you do a blue green. It's, you can get lost in the details. Like sometimes it may look like it's working, but it's not really working. Yeah, as right? was discussed earlier. Yeah. <laughs> it caches very well. Good points. <laughs> um, and I kind of did think about that too. Um, so I'm glad that, that we're on the same page. Do you have any like specifics? Like, so for you, like what would be the biggest use case after you install running pipeline, I guess, or maybe just building a pipeline pipeline? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's probably like, it almost starts like with an overview, very simply, like we're going to create a pipeline and just like have it echo something or just to make sure that like the internal processes within like all the components are working together, not even getting technical as to how they all talk to one another. But at least then you know, hey, we validated your installs working, you did an approval stage, that means the messages are flowing, things are kind of recorded, and your pipeline saved somewhere. <laughs> so, uh, and then from there, you can then dive into like the advanced use cases like, all right, so now let's deploy potentially to AWS or to Kubernetes, or let's add Kubernetes as a provider uh, at that point. Um, because you, you can start Spinnaker without any account and at least get something to work, right? And at least that's one aspect because then from there the question is like, all right, I have Spinnaker, I have a giant cluster, I have everything running. How do I make it do something cool? I'm like, all right, now next step, let's add a provider. And then you can add like AWS or something. So like the hello world of Spinnaker. Yeah, essentially yeah. like that. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Good feedback. Yeah, so um, when I first started on the Spinnaker team, so I had no experience with Spinnaker, but it did take me several hours to actually like chug through it and I, like, get it up and running. But I found what I did was that really helped me is I looked at that graph that you guys have on your website that was like, oh, this service talks to this service to this service. I was like, okay, I'll start with Cloud Driver because that doesn't need really anything. And I'll run that and just curl it. And if I can curl it and get art, like, you know, it returns like a blank list of artifacts that I just curled, like, so I just looked for like get requests and I was just like curling those. And once I saw that that service was working, I would then work on the next service. And I found just doing it incrementally like that really helped me getting Spinnaker up and running. Awesome. So service-based sort of yeah. confirmation that you got it configured right. That kind of answers the, 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 the questions that popped up in the, um, in the earlier meeting about well, how do we make sure that even though it, that it's actually um, conf configured correctly, that could be really helpful in the docs. So there is a comment in the chat from Ashley, um, and forgive me, I don't know the, all of the lingo here. Um, the Debian instructions have been updated and mostly work now. There's just an issue with the Halyard 1.52.0 caused by the spring boot upgrade, but once that is fixed, the docs are actually accurate. The only issue with the Halyard v1.51.0 is that it doesn't create the home directory for the Spinnaker user. Uh -huh. um, Ashley, uh, is that a, a current issue logged in, in the repo? Oh, sweet. <laughs> awesome. I love it. Okay, excellent. Good, good. And recorded for pos posterity as well. Excellent. Anybody else? All right, so this is where I was really hoping. I mean, I'll, I'll post this. Um, well, actually, I don't even have to post it. It'll be in the video. Um, but here's where I was really hoping to get some feedback on what are the big use cases that belong in the docs? And this is where I don't have that depth of knowledge as, as a user to say, well, what are the top 10 things that you're going to do with, with Spinnaker that caused you to adopt it in the first place? And if we could figure out what those, if I could figure out what those are, you guys probably already know, then perhaps I could guide the new user 
to the most compelling features and the most compelling use cases in, in a more efficient way through the docs. So one thing that's not really documented that I'm pretty sure like every one of us like probably uses, like it's documented, it has a page, but is it spell? Like, like spell, like there's like no documentation on like how to use that, like how to use that and like a, like there's a stage like evaluating variables and whatnot. Like how to use that, how to like, you know, you, then reference those like through spell expressions. So being able to like document that and showing like, you know, this is how you build a pipeline. This is how you can get, um, you know, like using spell, this is how you're able to get um, whatever it is that you need. Like you can do like two JSON, two end, for instance. Like there's a lot of good functionality there. Um, and then further, like from a developer standpoint, you can even go as deep as like, how do you go about adding your own spell function, um, which is which would be really huge for for users or for for users like us at least. Um, so yeah, I would definitely love to see those in docs. Um, I feel like it's very little touched on in terms of the Spinnaker docs. Yeah, I know that's true because when it was introduced in, in the um, in the um, contributor forum this morning, I, I was like, what is that? And I had to Google it, and then I had to look at the code, and I was like, oh, that's been there the whole time. I didn't know about it. So very good point. Um, I've got another point on that. Oh, not not spell expressions, but um, artifact usage and how artifacts work, I think, is another um, area that we, we can improve on. Cool. And appreciate you taking these notes. All right. Um, I'll hope to get more information from you guys. Um, and um, I hope that you will all consider also attending the docs um, bi-weekly SIG at like, oh, dark 30 in the morning for everybody in, on the West Coast, but at a good time for most users and contribute that way as well as you, as you think about this. When, when you go home tonight and think about what you didn't say to me that you wish you had, um, and you can always reach out to us in the Slack channel as well. I, I'll be monitoring the docs channel in Slack um, all right, so the next thing I was thinking about is continuous integration options. Like, when I first started, I just assumed that Circle CI would be part of the solution, but that was my naivety, not understanding that, well, maybe Jenkins and Circle CI are sort of our Spinnaker competitors. And how do you guys all see that? And somebody already wrote this as a thought. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, so um, not competitors, and I can say it's definitely not up to date, so Jenkins should stay. Um, I'm not sure about Circle CI, but there's also GitLab CI, which is recently added, and Travis CI is also supported, um, and I can volunteer to do some of that at least because we did the GitLab CI integration, so um, we can document that. And maybe, maybe when we add new features, it shouldn't get merged until there's docs because, I mean... That that's what happened there is I never did the documentation and then it eventually got approved and merged and a, a few months later it was released and we just kind of had forgotten at that point. So yeah, um, I, I I agree with you on a um, on on an ideal like on a, on a, um, on, a, on a practical level it might not always be possible yeah. to but um, just knowing that something needs to be docked. So is that already a, Git, a GitHub issue or? For the documentation, no, I don't think so. Oh yeah, could you start by just sure. creating, generating the issue, and then I will follow up with you, and we'll. And if thank yeah. you for volunteering, I will definitely leverage your time if you're willing to give it. Excellent. Yeah, I think we do have some documentation on GitHub Actions, but that might be just the Armory Docs. Integrations. I was just trying to clarify, if we're talking about, you know, where we run automated tests for Spinnaker itself, and that is GitHub Actions, but if it's possible to integrate GitHub Actions with Spinnaker as far as like triggering pipelines, and I think the answer is no. If somebody's working on it, that's great. <laughs> Well, okay, Sweet. Then, then I'm wrong. That's great. So that's just a place where the documentation could um, support the, the feature integrations. Um, if, you, if there's not an issue on that, will you generate one for me? And we'll get on that one too. Excellent. We already are populating the, um, the year of work I have to do. <laughs> Excellent, though, good. Um, and then my next question for this team was, 
Um, so I really felt like after the conversation this morning, and really probably even before this morning, that the customized content is nested too deep given where the community seems to be going with adoption. So I wanted to bring that up to the surface, and, and I'm, I see a lot of nods, so I'm gonna, I won't even ask for a show of hands, so I'm just gonna assume that everybody agrees that's, that's a, ta a task worth tackling. And then I didn't know if I, I don't really feel like the, the documentation that exists on building pipelines is cohesive. And that just could be my own ignorance again. So anybody who has feedback on, do we feel like the, the pipeline content is solid and maybe if it just gets moved up a level or, or organized? Oh, we got a hand. I guess there's, oh, sorry, I forgot. I mean, I guess hey, this is where I always struggle because you, know, you can have a two-stage pipeline and be successful with Spinnaker, and then you can have a 30-stage pipeline and be extremely successful too. So it's almost like we have to guide them and show, or rather, guide what you can do show what you can build and then maybe it's like as simple as showing a simple example and maybe an extreme example and then saying hey we're not going to solve cicd for your company that's what you're probably tasked with right, right. We're, we're probably going to tell you you don't need security scans you're like i can't believe you said that that's crazy you're asinine and like that's, that's you need to have that in there well that's great but then every organization does different things at different stages right different, so yeah. that's maybe more like Here's what you can do. Here's here's a crazy example, like a full detailed pipeline, and maybe like a basic example. And then if you want to talk about it, maybe it's worthwhile to go into Slack and saying, "Hey, can Spinnaker do blah?" Or like maybe guide them to saying, "Hey, if you have any questions on what's missing or what you want to do, maybe go talk with the community." Mike, Excellent. Right? That's really good feedback. Yeah. Maybe some best practices around building That'd pipelines. Be, yeah. That's and, probably the best way of putting it. Yeah. Cool. And I have one from the virtual, real quick. Um, it just says maybe a best practices versus size when looking at pipeline building. <laughs> Agreed. And so I'm. I like to like tinker with things, but I think it'd be awesome to have like a spinnaker playground, even like that just shows like example pipelines that you could just like click and be like, oh, look at what this does, you know, and then like actually like run it and it just like shows you what the output is. Um, I think would be really useful. Um, and just seeing like the different use cases that that you know examples that might people might want to see. Um, yeah, so that would be awesome. Awesome. That does that does sound like something that would be useful. Maybe um. A some documentation and then a repo where you could grab the, the manifests and, and load them into your, your instance and play with them. I do, I do have a follow-up for that. Um, we, uh, Fernando and myself, had a, a Google Summer of Code mentee uh, two years ago and he created try.spinnaker.io and it was a, a way of running Spinnaker to spin up, um, uh, give, give users access for I think 24 hours or something like that. And it would lock down the the uh, permission set for that cluster it was running on, um, so that you could only pull down Debian uh, nice. uh, Nginx images. So all you can do is run a pipeline, deploy your Nginx, see it, see it there, and it was it was pretty slick. Um, the blockers that we faced there were interacting with the CDF, and I think now that we have a new TOC and better better connections now, honestly, I think we can potentially try to move that forward. That's great news. Um, when I think of um, ways to deploy, I think AWS, GCP, and Azure, but, but, but am I missing anything? Kubernetes. Well, Kubernetes, yeah, I should have put that there, yep. Or no, no, yeah, ways to deploy your apps, like where you're going. So I know we can deploy across, but is there a bigger breadth of possibilities besides the, the three and then Kubernetes? And uh, yes, and we want to remove the ones, or we want to uh, show that the ones that. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah. So there's there's a a, a lot of different deployment um, options. Um, Kubernetes should definitely be be up there as well. Um, but then there's a whole slew of cloud providers or cloud targets that um, uh, are not well maintained. So we we may want to actually list them and mention on the docs that they're not maintained. Um, and also, I would I would also propose adding a call to action on that page and say, hey, if you're using this, please let us know. Um, we we need to know, otherwise, this is going to be going away at some point, or it's going to get deprecated. It's already unmaintained. Like you're you're playing with fire here, right. basically. Awesome, good feedback. And we got more. There's a handful from the virtual. Um, so Ashley said ECS as well. Um, and then Shane said, I didn't see documentation on using Spinnaker, especially with OpenShift, OCP, OKD. Great. Anybody? 
Do we need go? Oh, yeah, great. <laughs> oh, thank you for helping me with the microphone. Right. I think the, for the open shift, there may be some changes to the installation, but otherwise the deployments, pipelines, they are very similar. Some of the CRDs may be there for open shift, like routes that are inherent in them. Uh, those are not supported. I mean, they are supported for the deployment, but in not exactly the same um, built-in way. Uh, in the documentation, I think the low-hanging fruit is a slightly different topic, is more in terms of Let's say we have re releases that are coming out with a bunch of options that we create. Uh, there are some defaults and additional changes that we are doing. They are in the release notes, but they did not go back into the documentation. Documentation, yeah. Typically, people go and search, uh, say Google, look for something, and, and these release notes don't show up. Uh, right. They, they do search the documents, so they don't see these options in there. I think that may be the low-hanging fruit for us, taking those features from the release notes and having them integrated into the proper documentation. Yeah. I, I think maybe one thing that the community could do for anybody who's helping out with the docs is if you if you merge a feature, if you merge if you push a PR that changes the way that Spinnaker gets used, maybe just go ahead and open that GitHub issue right then and say, hey, this is this is you know, this is the commit, this is the PR, this is gonna need docs. Just to, so we, even if we don't get it, get it documented when that gets released, at least we don't lose the, um, the tracking of that technical debt that we need to go back and help the community understand it better. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, the, I'm sorry, I, I thought you were gonna up. <laughs> going back to OCP, I guess the issue is also they're asking what are the changes that one has to make to deploy to OpenShift? Um, yes, yeah, so I think the documentations exist sp sporadically in uh, OpsMX website, maybe even Armory. Uh, those are probably another pieces that we can bring into the main OSS because they're generally OSS. Feedback. Do you have a comment? Oh. No. Anybody? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, my next question when I was reviewing the existing documentation was, let's talk about storage and, and database op options. Um, there are a handful that are documented, but I don't know if that's up to date, and um, I don't know what the best practices around that are, and I was hoping I could get some feedback from this forum on that. Go, yeah, great. <laughs> Somebody has an answer. Yeah, I mean, this is something that's actually interesting. Um, it's something that I also kind of glossed over. I've always used Spinnaker with Redis, but I also know that's kind of an, it's a strong suggestion to use SQL, uh, especially as you start productionalizing it, is what, what's the story there? Like, when do you make that cut? Like, I guess that's where it's not very clear to me. Yeah, we got lots of <laughs> um, So my thing with is if you're gonna use Redis, use it as a cache. If you're gonna do data storage and queries, you need to use SQL. Don't try to like make shift Redis into something that is not, is kind of what I'm going at. So. <laughs> Just for the record, at Salesforce, we use, we store the, the cache data in SQL, but we still use Redis to schedule the caching agents. So it's, you still need Redis. Yeah, you still need it. Yeah, it's not saying you don't. Yeah, generally, I guess the hard and fast rule would be to use SQL in a production environment where you would be sad if you lost data. Um, so that's what we encourage a lot of our, our customers to do. But I think more general, like specific to the docs, um, the state of using SQL consistently across all the services, I think is currently chunked into different services rather than as like a holistic, here's how you enable SQL for Spinnaker. Um, and then there's also more, I think that we, we could be doing in, um, to, I guess, share about the migration story. Because there's still a path for you to migrate. Like, if you started on S3 and Redis, there are paths for you to migrate over to SQL. Um, and that path is currently kind of like tribal knowledge, if you will. Um, no, I think that is documented. There is a topic. But it's like five layers deep, so it's it's, it's a click through. Yeah. But there is a migration topic. I, I don't know if it's accurate, but I'll, but I'll um, it's, it's like, I'll um, look at it. I'll send you a link. <laughs> it's like a recipe that says salt to taste. Yeah. And you don't really know like where uh -huh. the limit is. Yeah. Um, cool. So we can. Yeah. So there's there's yeah. a lot more we could do there. Cool. Yeah. 
Sounds like I'm going to be busy this year. I like it. And there is a comment from Virtual. Um, I think it's just an anecdote, but don't use S3, use SQL from the beginning. Um, and then they also say the migration docs are accurate. I migrated successfully using the docs. Oh, so. good news. I love it. Round of applause, well, Ashley. good news about the docs. Uh, when, when you say extending Spinnaker, is that related to uh, plugins and plugin content? I believe so, yeah. Um, I, I, um, I don't want to uh, steal the thunder from, from Ben and Joe, but they had a great presentation yesterday, and they, had, they highlighted some good um, areas of improvement on, on that subject in particular. Um, uh, there's a lot, a lot we can do, especially around the um, build and release cycle for Spinnaker and best practices around there. Uh, Spinnaker plugins, that is. I, I think uh, docs-wise, the um, in addition to a few bits of tooling that I think the main project should provide to help people get started writing plugins and you know making a plugin available, um, the documentation about how to configure it and how the plugin system works is a little thin. Um, so it, it takes a lot of reading the code and understanding what it does understand how the plugin system works and how you're supposed to write these things and which extension points are available um, you know in particular which parts you can extend which parts what you have to do to make a part of Spinnaker that isn't currently extensible become extensible those would all be great things to add to the docs as well Um, so once once we get legal approval, um, we'll be able to send you those doc or like our slides too. So that that might be able to help you catch some highlighted points that we made um, and help you know flesh those docs out. Even just post them in the community. Okay, perfect. All right. Yeah. So I have a lot of experience with those plugins. I used to work on it, so space IDE. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, and I also, I mean, on this topic too, it's also worth noting, like, you don't have to be a developer to extend out of Spinnaker. Like, I've been very successful. We've we've seen a lot of success uh, out of, you know, just being able to do, like, simple things like webhooks and stuff. Being able to almost have, like, a path, like, are you kind of, like, a developer will looking to add a functionality into core? Or are you looking to, like, integrate with existing tools? I understand that could add some potential risk but at the same time, like, you know, a webhook can go a long way, right? Um, and and, and it, I think sometimes people will feel like, oh, I'm not really using Spinnaker because I'm doing a webhook stage. But really, that's the whole point, right? To have an extensible thing that works for you and your business. And just, just to add on to that, um, webhook's great. Um, there's also run job, run job stages as well. And that's also a great way. It truly is write whatever language you want, and you can get going. Um, and I think that that's... A, both, both of those are um, different use cases, but both are great ways to uh, extend Spinnaker. Oh. 
<laughs> no, I mean, uh, definitely, I think this is something, I think we do have docs on it, but it's also very confusing. And I think it starts with like X509 and like, really like the biggest thing is like, how do I auth in into the, an environment? Because that's enterprises today looking at any solution. If it doesn't have SSO, I can already tell you, it's not on my list. I don't want to manage thousands of users and nor do I want to manage a certificate store. Um, so that's one aspect of it. And then two, there's like, it's almost, you know, in terms of role base, like I think there's definitely some things within fiat that could be made less scary. Cause like right now, I, at least to me, like I'm going to be honest, I've never used fiat. Like, and I, I just know that like I've heard more problems with it than before, but I, that's also a very like outside looking in. And I'm sure once you get used to it and you know how to operate with it, I think the docs in it definitely to be kind of polished up. Uh, I've always kind of took the approach of like multiple spinnakers, which is not ideal either, but it's it's the thought like we definitely have to make that story less scary as a whole. I guess. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, most open source projects at least have a way for people to submit security issues. Like, and we, I don't know if we necessarily have a, is, is it, yeah, so we should definitely like, if, if anything, it should be like one of the things like security and then like found an issue, yeah. bam. And I think we do have it, but I think just that to keep that top level, that's, that's a big one because it is an open source project and we, all our companies in this room <laughs> potentially run on it. So, you know, their security issue is probably our security issue if it's valid, right? And we should at least pay attention to it. Um, no, I think uh, one thing that's worth noting is um, the, the the tone of like some docs too might be worthwhile to look into. Like I think some of them I, again, it's 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 because many people work on it, right? Um, but like how you guide people into like a production install, it, there's like a point of it where it says like if you're using this in production, you should do this, yeah. and then there's a section where it goes but this is really meant for large companies. Well, I'm, I'm a small company, but it's still a production cluster. Like, am I not, should I not do this? Then I'll go to this section. And then in that case, you're going to Debian route, right? Um, which is what's kind of guided there. But I guess like the flow and like the tonality of like how some things are conveyed, it, it should definitely like at least be reviewed or at least have kind of like a, a pass as we kind of like, if we start looking at this, this is my only, my only comment. She probably wouldn't let me merge anything unless it was better. So I might have to use this 
They're still saying they can't hear oh, you. Oh, okay. I'll and your text. captions don't work. Is this better? Oh, I know that's better because I can hear myself. Oh, yeah, maybe it wasn't working. Okay. Um, and really, I would just like to pass this around now to anybody else who wants to contribute to the conversation. I'm, thank God I'm done talking. <laughs> ah, Maria. Although I'm late, I just want to say thank you, everybody in this room, for being here. Because remember, we're an open source community, so just the fact that you are sitting in this room instead of taking a nap or anything else, I really, really appreciate it. So keep up the good work, and I want this to continue. And the great thing about conferences, you meet people in person, but then over Slack it gets lost. So um, if I would love to get everybody's information and, and make sure you join the, the docs channel on Slack so you can show up to those meetings when you have time, bring your friends, make it fun, and we can continue this work. It, this work leaves the room. So. Yes, that's what she said. <laughs> awesome. Well, I don't know, unless somebody else has something. Um, oh, we do, we have another one, awesome. We're gonna use our six minutes, I love it. No, no, yeah, sorry, I, 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 I'm sure we all. <laughs> um, I guess the other thing too is, um, as we start you know, talking about a significant change, if, or changing docs, the strategy of changing it would be good to know because like some place, you know, like I would use Ansible where they basically move docs and now everyone's like updating bookmarks and stuff. So like old versus new. Um, I've seen a lot of experiences where you have like keep old, go new, right? Or at least by version, right? So you can kind of see um, where it should go. I do know that that will add more complexity and I do know that that'll also add a lot of, you know, maintenance, right? But let's be real, like I kind of know where some things are having run it, but at the same time, I'm happy to move forward and find the right place to put it. But I think we need to like, are we, is this kind of going in the right direction, having feedback, instead of just kind of like sweeping changes, like yeah. how that kind of takes a hold would be huge to know. I agree with you. And um, again, I'll lean on the lead technical, or the um, principal technical writer at Armory won't probably let me make the, too many mistakes like that. So <laughs> yeah, that's good news. Yep. All right, you guys, thank you so much for coming. And I look forward to working with you this year and really coming back next year and um, we have a 2.0 doc set that we're ready to now start talking about a 3.0 doc set. Thank you all.